The newly married couple, Tom and Jill, just moved into a new home gifted to them by Tom's mother. The two of them were talking and eating when they suddenly heard a thud coming from the basement. They went to the basement and were utterly confused when a dog suddenly came out of nowhere. Nonetheless, they were still happy that they now have a dog that Jill named Anagi. They renovated their new home with the help of Tom's friend, Jason. And at night, they had a small housewarming party with Jason and his girlfriend. As they were talking about their childhood, Tom mentioned Jill's drawings of her and a made-up character she named Pretzel Jack, who is inspired by a contortionist. The next day, Jill was walking around the store when she saw Tom talking to a woman. When they got back home, she asked Tom who the woman was. Tom answered that the woman was named Sarah, and he once renovated her and her husband's master bedroom. Jill was still suspicious, though. She asked if Tom slept with the woman, and Tom got defensive, telling Jill that he wasn't going to cheat on her like Jill's father did on her mother. The two of them reconciled that night, and while they were sleeping, Jill had a nightmare. The next day, Tom and Jill saw a blue door in the basement, and they were creeped out as there hadn't been a door in there before. Tom called Jason, and they tried opening the door, but to no avail. Left with no other choice, Jason used a shotgun to break the doorknob, and the three of them opened the door only to see another door at the other end of the hallway. The door has a single handprint on it, and just like the first door, it was also locked. For days, they tried everything to open the door, but the door stayed locked. One day, Jill visited the therapist she has been going to for some time now, telling him that she feels unsafe because of the door in their house and that she can't trust Tom, who was obviously hiding something from her. That night, Jill caught Tom visiting another woman and went back home to go down the basement. She put her palm against the handprint, and the door opened. She entered when, suddenly, her flashlight died, causing her to not see someone passing by in front of her. When she finally managed to open the flashlight again, she saw a man standing in the corner of the room. The man suddenly ran towards her and out the door, and she called the police. The cops said that it must have been a break-in, but Jill told them that the intruder was already inside the house. Tom asked the cops if they could have someone stay and watch the house from outside for the night. The next day, Jill called Sarah, who told her to tell Tom to stay away from her or she was going to file a restraining order against him. Suspicious, Jill visited Jason to ask him if he knew something about Tom and Sarah, but Jason only told her that there was nothing going on. When Jill insisted on asking about Tom and Sarah's relationship, Jason started gaslighting her. As they were arguing, they didn't notice that the man from the basement was also there, standing idly before attacking Jason and murdering him. Shocked, Jill wasn't able to do anything but scream for the man to stop. The man started bending and doing tricks before leaving. The case was being investigated, and two detectives were questioning Jill. The female detective thinks Jill knows who the masked murderer is, because he killed Jason but didn't harm Jill at all. After that, Jill went to the basement and looked for her drawings of Pretzel Jack. For days, she kept thinking about the masked man until she remembered something. She visited her old home and waited for the new owner of the house to leave before sneaking inside to go to her old room. She knelt down in the closet and broke the thin wall that was covering a small door that looked exactly like the door in her new home's basement. She opened the door and saw a human-like figure with a mask on. Back in her own home, she was putting clothes on when she saw the masked man staring at her through the gap in the bathroom door. When Tom checked inside the bathroom, the man was gone. She visited her therapist again, telling the man that Pretzel Jack had become real, but the therapist didn't believe her and started coming up with reasons as to why she thought the masked man was Pretzel Jack. The lights started flickering just as Jill became agitated. Then it stopped when Jill left. Jill decided to open up to her neighbor, Ian, instead, and the man listened to her without any judgment. When they both realized that the masked man, whom Jill thinks is really Pretzel Jack, killed Jason because she was angry at him, the two of them quickly went back to Jill's therapist, whom she had just gotten angry at earlier that day. When they saw that the therapist was still alive, the two of them left again. Meanwhile, Tom visited the mysterious woman again. It turns out that the woman is an unconventional therapist who is helping Tom forget all his problems through floating meditation. Unbeknownst to him, he was being watched by the therapist. Jill was alone in the house when Tom's laptop rang, indicating that he had received a call. It was Sarah who was threatening Tom to stay away from her and her family. Jill could hear a baby crying in the background, and she realized that Sarah and Tom must have had a child together. Enraged, Jill unknowingly provoked Pretzel Jack into attacking Tom. Pretzel Jack initially ignored Tom's therapist as she wasn't his target, but the woman saw Pretzel Jack and shot him, causing Pretzel Jack to attack her. Once he was done with the woman, Pretzel Jack went to where Tom was and attempted to kill him. Tom managed to escape but got pinned down and stabbed in the chest by Pretzel Jack. The injured woman saw Tom struggling and shot Pretzel Jack one last time before dying. Tom got in his car, and when Pretzel Jack caught onto him, 
he immediately reversed the car, only to collide with another car. Pretzel Jack saw what happened and walked away while Tom was brought to the hospital. After hearing about what happened, Ian drove the worried Jill to the hospital. In Tom's room, Jill asked her husband why he hadn't told her about him going to therapy. Tom didn't answer, and the two detectives came to question them again. They showed the footage of Pretzel Jack attacking Tom, and Tom mentioned Jill's drawings of Pretzel Jack, stating that the man must have made himself look like Pretzel Jack when he saw Jill's drawings in the basement. The detectives wondered why Pretzel Jack killed Jason, tried to kill Tom, but never even did anything that could potentially harm Jill. Tom and Jill went back home, and the latter told her husband the truth about Pretzel Jack. She stated that Pretzel Jack just wanted to protect her from anything painful, and she admitted that Pretzel Jack first became real when her father left. She then showed him Pretzel Jack's body from back then, but Tom was having a hard time believing it. He asked why Pretzel Jack was mad at him, and Jill demanded that he tell her the truth about the baby. Tom finally admitted that Sarah was his ex, whom he found out was pregnant when he was already with Jill. Sarah's husband thinks the baby is his, but Tom is sure that he is the real father of the baby. Jill was mad because Tom had been lying to her all this time, and the two of them started arguing. Concurrently, Pretzel Jack must have felt Jill's anger and went to the couple's house only to see Tom and Jill leaving. Tom and Jill went to the latter's therapist to get marriage counseling. Jill told the two men that Pretzel Jack isn't just an illusion and that he's real. But the men still refused to believe her. Jill was furious at how they were treating her like she was a kid with an imaginary friend, and when they heard a loud thud from outside the room, Jill told Tom that she wasn't crazy. When the therapist stood up to talk with what he assumed was the maintenance guy outside, Jill and Tom tried to stop him, and Jill said that it was Pretzel Jack. The therapist didn't listen and still went out of the room, where they saw a janitor cleaning. Then they heard a sound coming from the window and saw Pretzel Jack crawling in. Jill and Tom watched as Pretzel Jack killed the therapist, and they ran out to see Ian's car. They entered Ian's car and drove away, with Pretzel Jack running after them. Arriving at Ian's home, the latter told them about how he controls his own creations. Just like Jill with Pretzel Jack, Ian also has his own imaginary friend he calls Tall Boy. But unlike Jill, Ian has long accepted his ability to make his imaginary friends real and knows how to control his creations. Tom told him to create a werewolf, while Jill told him to create a cat. Ian then created a Lycoy, which is a werewolf cat. Ian advises Jill to learn how to control Pretzel Jack, and for them to do that, Jill needs to get hurt first so she can meet Pretzel Jack. After that, they went to the basement, and to get the emotions out of Jill, Tom reluctantly admitted what he'd been doing behind Jill's back. Before Jill and Tom became lovers, Tom had an affair with Sarah, who was married. When Sarah got pregnant, Tom knew that the child was his son and wanted to become a father to the child, even if he didn't love Sarah in that way. Tom also admits that he didn't know if he wanted to have a child with Jill because he's afraid that Jill would be exactly like her father and wouldn't be a good mother at all. Then Tom walks out, not realizing that Pretzel Jack was already in the hallway after being summoned by Jill's emotional pain. Pretzel Jack ran past Tom and approached Jill, who was entranced at the sight of Pretzel Jack. Oddly feeling safe, Jill hugs Pretzel Jack, who hugs his creator back. Everything was going well until Sarah visited their home and Jill saw her and Tom talking. Jill got angry, and Pretzel Jack attacked Tom and Sarah. Pretzel Jack was able to stab Sarah in the leg before Tom and Sarah ran away. When they arrived at the equipment room, Tom learned that Sarah only visited to tell him that she took a DNA test and discovered the child wasn't Tom's son. Tom left Sarah in a room for a while to keep her safe and went out alone. Pretzel Jack saw him and started chasing him until they reached a swimming pool area, where Pretzel Jack tried to drown Tom. Jill saw what was happening and panicked. Ian then calmed her down and helped her control Pretzel Jack. Once she was able to control Pretzel Jack, she decided to destroy Pretzel Jack, who exploded underwater. After what happened, Sarah was then brought to the hospital, where she talked to Jill alone. Tom only kept on bothering Sarah, not because he was in love with her, but because he wanted to be a father to the son he assumed was his. While Sarah and Jill were talking, the two men waited outside the room. Jill decided to wander around, only to bump into the detectives. Without him knowing, Jill finished talking to Sarah, and Ian took her somewhere only he knew, telling her that he wanted to help Jill control her abilities. When Jill was asleep, Ian took Jill's phone and saw all the messages from Jill's father asking her to meet up with her in a motel. He went to the motel and met with Jill's father instead. It turns out that Ian is actually Jill's half-brother, he was the son of the woman Jill's father was cheating with. Ian has always hated their father, and he is also mad that their father hid Jill from him. Ian then summoned Tall Boy, who killed his father for him. They cleaned up the body and left the motel, not realizing that Tom saw him leaving the motel. Tom got a call from Jill's father because the latter couldn't get a hold of her, 
so Tom decided to go to the motel on behalf of Jill, only to find Ian leaving the motel. When he entered the room, he was confused because he didn't see Jill's father anywhere. The next day, Ian started training Jill how to control her abilities. When she failed, Ian assured her that it was alright, and he suddenly admitted that Anagi, Jill's dog, was actually just an imaginary dog that he created as a gift for Jill. Meanwhile, Tom realized the same thing when he saw another dog that looked exactly like Anagi. He followed the dog to Ian's house, and he went to the basement. He looked into the boxes and saw a bunch of Jill's pictures from when she was still young. Jill was standing outside the house when she suddenly felt like she was being watched. She could hear a low growl, and she followed where it was coming from. She entered the house and saw a closet. She opened it and sighed in relief when she saw that it was just filled with a bunch of random stuff. But then she saw a pug doll that looked exactly like the one she lost when she was a kid, and that eerie feeling came back. When Ian called her for breakfast, she asked him about his parents. Ian became emotional while talking about his mother. But Jill was still suspicious, so she requested to go back home. When they arrived at Ian's home, they noticed someone inside his house and went inside only to see Tom. Tom showed Jill the pictures and told her that he saw Ian at the motel where her dad disappeared. Jill then realized that Ian must be her brother from another mother. Ian confirms it and tells Jill that he's done everything for her without her knowing. They both have the same ability so Ian thinks only him can understand Jill. When Jill got mad at him for lying, Ian decided to show her his new gift for her. They went to the garage, where Tom and Jill saw her father getting eaten by a bunch of pugs. Ian let Jill call the cops for murders and he willingly confessed that he was the masked murderer. He was arrested by the two detectives, and on their way to the police station, a school bus stopped in front of them. That's when Tall Boy came to kill the detectives and help Ian. Meanwhile, Tom and Jill were spending some time together when Jill accidentally created a baby that had no arms or legs. Creeped out, Ian refused to hold the baby, which upset Jill, who told him to leave her alone for a while. Tom went out of the house and saw a bloody Ian standing there. Tall boy killed the cop that was still in Ian's house. And Ian created a door on Tom's front door, revealing a red hooded woman. Tom was then knocked out and kidnapped by Ian. When Jill realized Tom was gone, she saw a dead cop in front of Ian's house and approached the body. There, on the ground, she saw a sign telling her to meet Ian in the ghost neighborhood that their father had created. When Tom woke up, Ian mocked him and told him that Jill was soon going to divorce him, once she realized that Ian was the only one who could understand her. And that Jill doesn't really love Tom, and she only chose him because he's the safe choice. When Ian suddenly winced in pain, Tom used that as a chance to escape and sprinted away immediately. With Tall Boy chasing after him, it was already night when Jill reached the ghost neighborhood. A truck stopped in front of her, and a man stepped out. She asked if the man saw anything suspicious when slimy, hooded figures suddenly surrounded them. The hooded figures killed the man, and one of them stabbed Jill's tire. Jill ran away and hid when she saw Tall Boy. Then she heard a sound coming from a house and saw Tom. She approached Tom and asked him if he was fine. She tried to bring back Pretzel Jack, as he's the only one who can help them at this point, but she couldn't do it, and Tom was acting weird. When Jill failed, Tom told her it was fine and kissed her. Jill gripped Tom's hand, and a white fluid was seen oozing out of his hand. Jill realized that it wasn't Tom she was speaking to, but just another creation Ian was controlling so he could feel Jill. The fake Tom started chasing Jill, and the latter stabbed him with a sharp piece of wood. The real Tom saw what was happening and approached Jill, who was cautious of him, thinking that it might be another fake Tom. Tom cut his own hand to show Jill the blood oozing out of his palm, proving that he's the real Tom. Since there are so many hooded figures, Jill and Tom hid inside an unfinished house until the sun came up. Jill wanted Tom to leave by himself and get some help while she stayed because she was the only one Ian wanted. But Tom refused to leave her behind, so they left together. On their way, Jill felt Ian's presence, and Ian came out of his hiding place. He was happy that Jill sensed him because, for him, it meant that they really were meant to be. Ian commanded Tall Boy to chase the couple and kill Tom. He tries to run after them too, but he's already weak since he's been using up all his strength for his creations too much. Tom and Jill hid inside another house, where Tom apologized for lying to Jill, and not believing her when she told him about Pretzel Jack the first time. Jill then decided to create Pretzel Jack again while Tom distracted Tall Boy. By the time Tall Boy caught her, Pretzel Jack had already been created. Ian and Jill fought using Tall Boy and Pretzel Jack. When Tall Boy lost, Ian could also feel the pain. Knowing that this would never end as long as Ian could still create monsters and send them to kill them, Jill planned to just kill Ian to end it once and for all. The three of them ran after Ian, and the slimy, hooded figures also started chasing them. When Ian saw fake Tom's squashed head, 
he ate something to gain a little strength he could use to recreate Tallboy again. When he saw Jill, Tom, and Pretzel Jack running towards him, he ran away again and went inside a house. The three followed him inside. Weirdly, the hooded figures stopped and didn't follow them inside. Inside the house, Jill opened a room where she saw a broken creation that looked like her. She realized that Ian had created a replica of her. She then opened the double door and saw Ian sitting with multiple doors all around the room. That's where she learned that the door in her basement was created by Ian. It was Ian's way of giving Jill a little push to realize her ability and feel the connection between the two of them. He tried explaining to Jill why they were so much better together, but Jill rejected him and his crazy ideas. Enraged, Ian grabbed hold of her. Seeing Jill struggling against Ian, Pretzel Jack walked towards them to help her, but Tall Boy appeared and killed Pretzel Jack. Seeing this, Jill suddenly felt weak. Pretzel Jack is a part of her, so whatever Pretzel Jack was feeling, she could feel it too. Tom came out of a room and had a stare down with Tall Boy. Then he suddenly ran towards Tall Boy. Tall Boy tried to hit him with the drill, and Tom dodged them before entering the room where Jill and Ian were before closing the door. Tall Boy started destroying the door, with Ian controlling him. To stop Ian, Jill stabbed him, but the guy couldn't even feel the pain anymore. When Tall Boy destroyed the door and ran towards them with the drill aiming at them, Tom pulled Jill away. Due to the momentum, Tall Boy couldn't stop himself and accidentally impaled Ian, pinning him against one of the doors. Ian died, and all his creations died along with him. Years have passed since that fateful day, and Tom and Jill now have a child. When they heard their daughter crying, Jill went to attend to the child. She went back to her shared room with Tom. Unbeknownst to the couple, their daughter just created her first ever dream door. 